Welcome to tonight's program, Shake Your Tail Feathers. Uh, we are very excited. I know you all are as well. I'm joined tonight by Regina from our library system and Safari Todd. Hi, how's everybody doing? Hey, guys. Hey, good to see you. We're excited. And all of this excitement about summer reading is 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 real. We are very excited for it. Um, we have so much going on. We have programs, book lists, reading challenges, and you can find out all about it on our landing page, <clears throat> landing page at hcplc.org slash summer. And um, also this summer, we're having our reading challenges. Like I mentioned, you can sign up for them. We have one for adults, one for kids, one for tweens and teens. You can log your minutes read. You can log books read, complete activities to earn badges and be eligible for prizes. Uh, to sign up, and you can still do it, you can do it at hcplc.beanstack.org. And you can find more information on that on the link page as well. And also, again, welcome to Shake Your Tail Feathers. Uh, that's a bird, a type of bird you're going to see tonight, so we're excited to get to that. And, I, and I'd also like to thank, thank the Children's Library Foundation for their support. Without their funding, we wouldn't be able to have this program, so a big thank you to them. And now I'll hand things over to Regina. So we just wanted to give you our book shout out for today. Uh, today's book is just called Macaw, since we're gonna be learning about those types of birds today. It's called Macaw, Discover Pictures and Facts About Macaws for Kids. It is available on Hoopla, and you can find that through hcplc.org slash books. But if you go to our website and just search birds, you can find endless resources on that. There are all kinds of books about all kinds of birds, so you should check that out. That's right, there's a lot there. Okay, so now we're gonna turn off the screen here, and we're gonna turn off our microphones and cameras, except for Todd, of course. Um, and welcome, Todd. Let's hey guys, welcome. Thanks for having me back. I really appreciate it. Um, guys, a few folks that don't know who I am, <laughs> we have with us today a couple of people, as you know as well. But my name is Todd Griever. I'm also known as Safari Todd. I'm a conservation educator, which means I teach with animals, often at ecosystems. I'm also a large animal handler and trainer. Behind me is one of our guests tonight. We're going to get to that in a couple of minutes. But today is all about birds. And today we brought some beautiful parrots. And some of them are, are TV and animal, uh, TV and movie animals, and you're going to get a chance to, to get up close and personal with them today. By the way, the animals that we have here today, all three of them are rescues, which is really kind of cool. Um, a lot of times in our industry, we try to work with rescues, take animals that have had a horrific start, and hopefully give them a really good ending. And I got to tell you, the first animal we're going to bring with us today and share with you guys is one of the animals that had a really rough start in life. I'm gonna go grab him right now. Come here, Tiki, step up. Hi, hi guys, this is Tiki. Tiki is an amazing dusky, dusky, <laughs> dusky conure. He is actually one of the critters that we have, um, that we rescued and he is an amazing critter. Give me one second, because I'm gonna grab something for him. What's really cool about dusky conures, these guys right here, they're a small parrot. Um, they're from the Western Amazon Basin down in South America. And they're just like a tiny, tiny little parrot. Now you hear the noises that he makes. He makes a ton of different types of noises. And they do learn to mimic, which is what a lot of kids ask us, is do, do these guys talk and they can. Uh, it's not as clear as some of the other parrots, but he does pick up a lot of words. And right now he's mimicking a cricket because at one of our facilities that he hangs out with, we have crickets for food for other animals. And he's actually learned how to sound just like a cricket. Um, he's really excited about being here today. And he came from a household where people did not understand that you have to be able to train these guys in order for them to be happy. And let me tell you, Tiki was a very, very unhappy, <laughs> as I said that, a very unhappy parrot where he was. And one of the things about him is he was attacking everybody in the household. 
Well, they didn't understand that parrots need training and they need to stay busy. Excuse me, step up. Excuse me, step up. Thank you. <laughs> um, and the, so part of the training is to get him to do what he wants, he's supposed to do. Would you like to show off a little bit? One of the things that we got from him was the fact that uh, when he was biting everybody, he was, he was frustrated. He didn't have anything really to do other than to attack people. So he gave him a couple of things to learn. One of the things he likes to do is he likes to play dead. Would you like to show off? Are you ready? One, two, three, bang. He goes upside down, sort of like that. But then all the way dead. Oh no, now he's really dead. <laughs> and then he pops back up again. It only took a very short period of time to teach him how to play dead. Want to do it one more time? Ready? One, two, three, bang. He's dead. Nope. All the way. Let go. And now he's really dead. Oh no. I think we killed him. No, he's really just fine. <laughs> he's a cute little guy. One of these things about these guys also is they actually fly really well. Some of the parrots in captivity don't develop muscle, uh, muscle strength, so they can't fly very well in captivity. This one here flew very well. And one of the problems was he was coming up off of curtain rods and attacking people in his house. Well, the lady called us to ask whether or not we could come help them out with their animal. We got to the front door and he flew and attacked the lady at the house. And at that point, she decided she didn't want to be a parrot owner anymore. And we took Tiki home. And I gotta tell you, these guys right here, he's a little grumpy today because he's not in his home place. So he's a little unsure about what's going on. But we're gonna learn a little bit more about these guys and some really important facts. I'm gonna show you something really cool about parrots in captivity. All parrots in captivity will have this little band that they have right on the legs. Can you si guys see the band on Tiki's leg? That shows that he was born in captivity. If a parrot in a pet shop doesn't have one of these, they could actually be taken out of the wild illegally. And that's really bad. You see in the Amazon rainforest where these guys live, unfortunately, um, a lot of parrots are critically endangered. We're really lucky with these guys. They're actually not endangered at all. They're what's called least concern, which means there's a lot of these guys in the wild. Oh yeah, you wanna hear something crazy? We get these guys now in Florida too. Uh, before a lot of you guys were born, we had a hurricane called Hurricane Andrew. Hurricane Andrew uh, came through the state of Florida and released tons of wild animals into our ecosystem. And these guys here were one of the ones that have been loose. And it's actually small flocks of conures that are flying all over our state. Now I gotta tell you, it's pretty interesting to be down in my or down the Keys or even here in Titusville and have conures fly right by you in small groups. But it is kind of interesting. They are beautiful, um, but they are an invasive animal and don't belong here. Uh, by the way, these guys only get to be about 10 or 11 inches tall. Um, they can live 20 to 30 years, which is pretty cool. Their main diet is fruits and veggies. They do like nuts as well. Um, this guy here will actually sit on the side of your bowl and eat whatever you're eating. Um, he definitely is gregarious, which means, which means he likes people and other parrots, and he loves to be with you when he eats. Uh, one other thing that we're going to talk about with these guys here, um, these guys here in the wild, they actually can hang out in groups of up to just about 30 parrots in one group. Oh, and he's really excited now. Um, we'll slide him back into his enclosure. <laughs> I think he got really excited because our other handler just showed up. Um, this guy right here. Um, is super excited to see her. So we're gonna slide him back in his cage and bring in another bird. Wanna come up? Hi. Hey guys, look at this one. This is a little bit bigger. This is actually an Amazon parrot. And it's actually from South America, from the Amazon basin. And what's really cool about these guys this is most, one of the most widely kept parrots in captivity. It's called a blue front Amazon. It's called that because of the blue right above its beak. That area is called the sear. What's really neat about these guys is the blue gets really bright. And then as it gets older, it gets more yellow on its head, more yellow on its shoulder, and these beautiful, beautiful colors on the wings, which he wanted to she wants to show off right now. By the way, what's really neat about this one here is He's one of my, uh, she's one of my TV stars. She's been in movies, she's been on TV, um, and she currently works with us all the time. 
um, for other production work that we're doing. So what's really neat about her is she's been around for a long time. She's about 36 years old this year. Oh, and you think that's old? Not at all. These guys here, they can actually live as long as 80 years. Uh, one of the things you gotta remember if you want a parrot for a pet is the fact that these guys here may outlive you. So you gotta have a plan. Um, a lot of the times people pass away and they don't have a place for their parrots and the parrots end up in rescues. We're really lucky that we have some of the most beautiful parrots um, that we rescued, um, but you know the reality is is they are going to live a long time. Uh, these guys right here, um, they actually let's see what it says on this one. The flocks on these guys here can actually reach almost 30 in one group. Can you imagine how loud that would be? And by the way, these guys also mimic her talk. What's really cool about Ivy? Ivy mimics a lot of things, and since she's 30 years old plus, a lot of them are video game noises. She actually does video game noises from Atari 2600, which my boys played when they were little, all the way up to video games um, from today, which is kind of cool. So they pick up and learn a lot of things. Matter of fact, you just asked me for a cracker. Um, one of the neat things also about these birds, not only um, do they talk, but they also mimic other noises as well. And this one does the space invader noise. It does the, um, the asteroids noise. Uh, so it does a lot of crazy fun noises for sure. I'm gonna show you one other cool thing about this animal here. Oh yeah, before I get to that, I wanna show you. Ivy also has one of those leg bands. You can see it right here. By the way, those leg bands, they're put on from birth. Um, once they hatch out of their egg, the person that hatches them puts them on so that these guys here um, can go to pet shops, and people know that they were bred in captivity and not taken illegally out of the wild, which is really, really important. I'm gonna see if she'll let me under her wing for a second here, because I wanna show you these beautiful colors on the wing. Can you show her? Look at those beautiful colors on the inside. There we go, I'm gonna show them that way too. Can we show them? Can I show them the beautiful colors? There you go. <laughs> Those colors there are really bright, and that enables these guys to find each other in the very dense tropical rainforest of the Amazon. These bright colors allows flocks to get together and also makes it a lot easier to find um, th their mate, which is super, super important as well. I'm gonna put this guy back, and we're gonna bring out the real big guy who's been waiting in the back, <laughs> making a lot of noise. Are you ready? <laughs> I think he's ready to climb down and say hi. Can you step up? Hey folks, take a look at this. This is Rainbow. Rainbow is a military macaw. What's really cool about these guys here is they are one of the larger parrots on the planet. If you turn around to see the camera so everybody can see you. Step up. That's probably a little bit better. Um, what's really neat about these guys here <laughs> is First of all, they have about a four foot wingspan. So they are huge. We're gonna get them right up close to that camera so you guys take a good look at them. Uh, that massive beak, by the way, that massive beak has about 700 pounds of pressure per square inch. They can actually break a broomstick. So making sure that they're trained properly is really, really important. These guys are actually from Mexico, down through Central America, into Northern South America. <laughs> and he's getting really happy to see himself on camera right now. What he can't, what you guys don't realize is he's seeing himself right behind the camera here um, on <laughs> the computer screen, and he's very excited. You guys may have noticed something really cool. Look at his white cheeks. They're starting to turn pink, which means he's blushing. When they're really, really excited, they'll take and that, get that full of uh, extra blood, and it turns their cheeks bright pink. So these guys here literally blush. Oh, by, by the way, they're called a military macaw because the beautiful green military outfit that they have on and the beautiful red on the top that looks just like a beret. And so people think that they've dressed up for a military parade and that's how they got that name. Oh, by the way, in the wild, I gotta tell you guys something, these guys are loud. Um, somebody asked me earlier today uh, about having a parrot for a pet. This is one of those guys you gotta be prepared for you're not gonna believe how loud his call is. First thing in the morning when the sun comes up, they do these calls to get all the parrots together because they, they uh, hang out in huge flocks. 
And what's really cool about that, that call can be as so loud that it can be heard for almost three miles away. If you're standing right next to it and he calls you, it'll actually make your ear ring, just like somebody shot up a firecracker next to you. So they are super, super loud. Oh, another thing with these guys, they do take a lot of care. All parrots do. Um, these guys get to have a great diet. These guys eat fruit, veggies, um, pellets, a few seeds, um, and they get that stuff every single day. They need fresh water, a huge enclosure. Could you imagine having a bird that has a wingspan of over four foot across? This guy here, he definitely needs a big cage. Oh, and on top of that, constant new toys. Oh man, and they wreck the toys. When I say they wreck the toys, that beak with, 1100, uh, with 700 pounds of pressure per square inch, it can crunch down and destroy almost anything. So the toys that we put in this cage very often get just eradicated. Are you getting a little more comfortable being in front of the camera now? I think he likes being a star, folks. That's kind of cool. Do you like being a star? Can you dance? By the way, he does like to dance. He likes to dance a lot. He likes to dance to 80s music, which is pretty interesting. Going to dance for me? Yeah, you're going to dance for me? Good job. He's starting to get that dance thing going, which is kind of fun. By the way, you're also going to notice he's got some huge pokey nails. Uh, those pokey nails are actually designed so he can grab a hold of the branches um, while he's uh, uh, trying to get the fruit. And, uh, and when he grabs a hold of the side of the trees just to perch, and he is so excited right now. Oh, <laughs> you want to hear something really gross? Of course you do. Gross is always great. These guys here, when they're really excited and they really like you a lot, they'll start bobbing their head up and down, coughing up food they have in a small sack in their throat called a crop. You want to hear something crazy? They cough the food up and they try to feed it to you. So when they love you a lot, they throw up on you. Now, then, let me tell you, that doesn't work for humans. If you love somebody a lot, don't throw up on them. It doesn't work for us at all. Um, by the way, this one's name is Rainbow. Rainbow got his name for all the beautiful colors that he has on his feathers. And he definitely has beautiful colors on his body. Um, I'm going to actually bring Ingrid over and let Ingrid take him just for a second. Step up. Um, one thing about uh, this guy right here is he's actually a rescue. And when he was rescued, he was rescued because he didn't like guys. It took quite a bit of training to get him on my arm and even more training, giving him some love in order to be able to pet him. But he still likes girls way, way more than he likes guys. If you notice, he's starting to blush again. He got so excited that she picked him up. And I think her beautiful multicolor hair, I think she, they, he thinks she's a parrot as well. By the way, Ingrid's been working with us for a long time. She's been training animals, everything from alligators to big cats with me for years. Um, and of course, working with the parrots as well. And we're happy to have her for this broadcast today. If you notice now, Rainbow's starting to dance quite a bit. He's pretty excited. He wants to show off so that he, he can show her how beautiful he is. Um, I'm going to have you actually turn him around a little bit for me because I want to show you guys something really cool. This tail right here is for balance on these guys when they're flying. Um, they have beautiful colorations, and that tail will actually fan out and make the animal fly very stable. These guys are actually super fast parrots and actually can fly over 20 miles an hour, which is just incredible. And these beautiful, beautiful feathers are um, how he's able to do that. I'm going to give him some love up here and see if he'll allow me to take and reach underneath that feather. There we go. Good job. Thank you. you want to come back? He wants to come back. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the three different types of parrots that we have here today. A um, couple things to remember. Parrots are great pets if you're prepared for once. Remember, pets are actually animals sometimes that live an awful long time. These guys here, tortoises, things like that, you really gotta be prepared as to what to do with them um, when you decide that you don't want to be a bird parent anymore or you get so old that you can't take care of them anymore but you gotta have a place for them. The second thing is, remember when you get an animal for a pet, you're supposed to have a pet more than a year, more than two years, you're supposed to have it for their healthy lifespan. And that's something we really gotta remember. So if you're not prepared to take care of an animal for its whole entire healthy lifespan, it's probably not a pet for you. Oh yeah, remember one more thing. If they get angry at you, they are gonna treat you like a parrot, not like a human. And that beak right there, that beak can cause a lot of damage. That beak at 700 pounds of pressure can actually break the bones on my hand or my arm. 
So uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're prepared for that as well. Um, I'm hoping you guys have some great questions for me. And uh, I'd love to hear from the people in the audience. If you guys have any questions on the birds or any other, other types of animals today, I'll be happy to help you out. What do you think, guys? Is it time to ask, answer some questions? Definitely. I believe Regina is going to come on for the Q&A. Oh, here we go. Hey, Regina, what do you think of Rainbow? Hi, I think she's beautiful. Awesome, awesome bird. She's my brat. We do have some great questions coming in from our audience. Let's see. Uh, let's start with an easy one. What is your favorite bird? Oh, my favorite bird is really simple. Now, it's really funny. Earlier, I heard you talking about the Bird of Prey Center in Maitland. Um, they have a bird there that's called the Crested Caracara. The Crested Caracara isn't a parrot. It's actually a bird of prey. And what's really cool about those guys, they're Mexico's national bird. Just like our national bird is the bald eagle. And I gotta tell you, they're one of the most beautiful birds of prey out there. If you ever get a chance to see a Crested Caracara, by all means, take a look at them. By the way, they come all the way here to Florida, then fly all the way back to Mexico and back every year <laughs> they i think they got it down as far as to you know travel back and forth between two tropical areas to hang out but they're really really nice birds and they are a bird of prey which makes them very special that's great i love those birds too uh let's see we have a question about we heard uh i think how old ivy was how old is tiki uh tiki gosh tiki i think this year is going to be um 13 or 14 years old um, he was in a household for a while, and they just couldn't understand how to handle him very well. Um, we've had Tiki for quite a while since then, and I got to tell you, he's a lot of fun to have, but uh, Conyers are a handful. <laughs> uh, it's really funny. Uh, you saw him try to bite me a couple times while we were working with him. Uh, the bite's not very hard, but I do swear that they go to cuticle removing school, where they'll bite down right in the crook of your fingernail in a very soft spot. They seem to have that pretty down pat. Okay. How did you uh, get so interested in learning about birds? Well, I got to tell you, um, birds were one of those animals that I got exposed to through the zoo industry. Um, when I was a zookeeper for the Brevard Zoo, I was their night keeper very early in my career. And I had to actually go around cleaning out different areas that had lots of parrots, the big, huge flight aviaries, things like that. And you know what? I got to tell you, you get to learn that they have personalities. They're super smart. This one here likes to unlock his cage if possible, slide the door open and come say hi, all on his own, which is kind of cool. But that smartness comes with a price. Um, you know, these guys here, you really gotta have secure caging for them. You really gotta make sure that they don't escape because in Florida, one of the problems, the big guys like this that, that are super colorful, they are also very easy to spot by birds of prey and other types of predators. So when they get loose in Florida, Sometimes they don't survive very long. Okay. Do you uh, have to replace their leg bands during their lifetime? No, the leg bands are actually large enough so they can grow. Um, the diameter is large enough for the animal to grow um, its entire, entire lifespan. Now, sometimes they do remove them because of medical situations and things like that. But the reality is, is that if that happens, you should still keep the band. That way there, you can always prove that it was a captive born animal. The last thing you want is somebody to confiscate an animal jet for a very long time because you can't prove that it wasn't taken out of the wild. Hey guys, wild animals are not good pets. They're not. Um, animals that are raised in captivity, um, that, are, that are taken care of from birth by humans, um, that they learn to bond with people, they make the best pets. Taking an animal out of the wild, what you're doing is you're making things imbalanced. And you can actually make it so an animal may be taken away from its family. Um, it may be, if it's a parrot, could you imagine you take the parrot out of the wild and you don't know that it has eggs back in its nest that's taken care of? There are so many repercussions um, for taking an animal out of the wild. Make sure you only, only have captive born pets. Um, that is so important. I think we have time for just a couple more questions. I really love this one. What is something a bird has done that has completely shocked you? Oh, that's great. So we have a, a bird that's called um, Merlin. 
at Golfing Gator. Merlin is an Asian minor bird. And I got to tell you, we got him the coolest way. Um, he escaped his owner, but he flew onto some people that definitely take, uh, take and love and care about pets, but in a very odd way. He literally flew across town and landed on somebody's head that has an animal pet crematorium. <laughs> and so, so he literally flew into an area that where animals, um, well, spend their last, uh, their last moments uh, in a very strange way. So I gotta tell you, um, it is ironic that, that he was found that way, but I gotta tell you, we love having Merlin. Merlin's a beautiful animal and, uh, and it's one of my favorite stories. All right, let's see what else we got here. What do you think is the easiest bird to take care of? What's the easiest? Oh, is somebody looking for their first pet um, animal, uh, parrot or type of bird for a pet? You know, I gotta tell you, cockatiels from Australia are amazing. They're a smaller bird. They're still kind of in the parrot family. And what's really neat about them, they can learn to talk too. They're a little bit smaller, easy to take care of. The cage doesn't have to be huge. Um, and you know what? They love people. You are so excited to be on camera. Guys, he is such a ham. By the way, these guys are known for this too. Once they get comfortable and he's awful comfortable, he's just being a big clown, which is so much fun. And uh, one last question. What is the most dangerous animal you have ever handled? Um, humans, by far. <laughs> hey guys, you know, everybody always asks that question. Humans are by far the most dangerous thing on this planet. Guys, we destroy more animals, habitat, we kill more animals needlessly. Um, we, we, we become very creative in how we kill animals. We kill animals with traps. We kill animals with guns. We kill animals with knives, bare hands. I mean, there's so many different ways that we actually destroy animal life, which is kind of nuts when you think about it. You know what? I am all for the fact that, you know, we definitely need animals for food to eat, things like that. But I gotta tell you something, man. This trophy hunt and stuff where people go out and kill animals, just to put them on their wall. Um, I'm not for that at all. That's something that, that's not cool. And I hope that uh, um, we get to some point in society where that doesn't happen anymore. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Todd. Thank you, Regina. Th those questions were great. Uh, thanks everyone for submitting your questions. What a great program. What a beautiful bird. Thank you so much for sharing these birds with us. No, thank you for um, having me. Yeah, it was great. Always fun with you. Um, so if you'd like to contact the library, oh, let me bring up my slide before I start talking like that. All right, here we go. So if you want to contact the library, you can go online at hcplc.org slash contact, or you can call us at 813-273-3652. And to learn more about our summer reading, that's underway. It's still going. So you have a lot of time to still take part. Um, our landing page is hcplc.org slash summer. And also, if you want to see um, some more of uh, Safari Todd's animals or just learn more about uh, what he does, uh, you can go to safaritoddunlimited.com. All right, with that, uh, again, I'll say thank you to Todd and Regina for helping us have this great program tonight. Rainbow and Tiki and Ivy. Ivy. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Regina, you win. You won. You remembered the names. I did not remember. Those birds. Those birds love you already. Guys, All right. Well, thank you for having me. It was really yeah. great. The audience. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Pick up those books. Do lots of reading this summer. That's right. Thank you, Todd. Thanks for everyone for coming. We'll see you all very soon. All right. Good night. Bye. Guys. Bye. Bye.